my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah. We bear witness and we testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his life. All salawats and salams be upon our Prophet, upon his noble family, his righteous companions, and all those who follow his path till the last day. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah today we'll talk about this very important topic and that is on traffic safety. Every night when we go home, six o'clock news, we see every day our children or loved ones getting killed because being careless while they're driving. And this is very important to understand, especially for our children, that it's not just about them. As parents, every day when our children go out, in our mind is what's going to happen. May Allah bring them home safely. Every time we, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't want anyone to knock on our door and to give that bad news to us. How many people I know and you know they're in wheelchair for the rest of their lives because of their careless driving, reckless driving? How many people are paralyzed? Children, young, eight, as, as young as 18 years of age. Some of them even steal their, their parents' car. Why? Because they get encouraged by their friends. You know, you're, you're not doing this. Are you able to do that? You know, they, they, they dare them to do certain things. They don't realize that it's not just their lives that they're ruining. It's the lives of their parents as well and their loved ones. So this is number one, the reason I chose this topic. And number two, one night I was driving and it was very late at night. You know, like as late as, you know, after midnight, pretty much. I had to go visit someone in the hospital. And then as I was driving home, I saw the red light. And when the red light is there, I stopped. Even though when I looked you know, left and right, back and, and, and even front, there was no living soul there. No car for me to hit. But yet I stopped at that red light. Why? Because those rules are there for a reason. For us to follow them. Whether it's at night, whether it's during the day, they're there to protect us for our safety and the safety of other people. And I said to myself, subhanAllah, you see how human being or instinct, we stop at red light even two o'clock in the morning. We know that this red light is there for a reason. And yet we forget every, all the red lights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. But we, we forget about those red lights. Here, even though there is no one there, but we stop. Sometimes, why? Because sometimes some of us might be scared that might be a police car at the back or maybe there is camera. How about the camera of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to our daily lives? Or that those red lights that Allah has put there for a reason, for us, for our safety and the safety of others, my dear brothers and sisters. So just, just that comparison when we read the Quran, and the hadith of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, the commands, you know, the what is halal and what is haram. And Allah knows, you know, this better than even those people who put those those safety rules there. But we ignore those things, those red those red lights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them for a reason for every single one of us. You know, nowadays technology, alhamdulillah. During the time of the Prophet Ali Salaam, they used to ride horses and camels and, and other animals. Nowadays, the technology and Islam always encourages science and technology. They discover new machines, vehicles every single day before it was with petrol. Now even electric cars in the future, we have even God knows what's going to be the cars that are going to fly. 
There's nothing impossible because these are mentioned in the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالْخَيْلَ وَالْبِغَالَ وَالْحَمِيرَ لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَةً وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And he created the horses, mules, and donkeys for you to ride. And he creates that which you do not know. Who knew that would be electric cars? If you ask my grandfather or your grandfather that a time will come that the, 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 you know, we don't have to use petrol, they would say, no, no, this, this is impossible. And yet it's happening. If someone asks us that will be cars that's going to fly, some people might say, hey, you're, you're not normal. But that time will come because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I create things that you have no idea about. Those things that will come. And this is very important for us to understand. Even though back at the time of the Prophet, they used to ride horses. Now we are able to ride these cars and all these sport cars and whatnot. This is nothing wrong with that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything that he creates, he does, we, we discover, is for our own benefit. If we use those things properly, my dear brothers and sisters. And you know what Prophet Ali Salaam said? And some of my friends are going to be very uh, happy to hear this hadith of the Prophet Ali Salaam that he said, part of man's happiness, a part of man's happiness is to have a big house, a big house, to have a good neighbor, and to have a good car. He didn't say car, he said mount, but that means that whatever you, you ride nowadays, even if it's a car. So having a spacious house, having a good car, this is a part of man's happiness, especially the boys that love sport cars. But if we use them properly, my dear brothers and sisters, every time when you're about to ride your car, don't think just about yourself. Think about your family members, and especially your children, if you have children. And also think about the safety of other people as well. This is not just about you. And what I cannot understand, and this is also haram, when some people abuse the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they drive 200 k's an hour where it's only 80 or 100 and something happens and they have the audacity to say that this is the qadr of Allah. The qadr of Allah is not, Allah didn't push you to drive 200 uh, k's an hour. You, you did that. And as a result, you're going to be accountable by, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So the qadr of Allah, yes, Allah wrote what you and me going to do. But Allah didn't push you or me to, to, to break those rules that are there for a reason, my dear brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to being thankful the things that we have, Allah also mentioned this in the, in, in the Quran and he said, and who created the species, all of them and has made for you of ships and animals those which what you ride them and what what he said that you may settle yourselves upon upon their backs and then remember the favor of your lord when you have settled upon them to be grateful that you are able to drive a car number one how many relatives i have how many relatives you have overseas that they don't even dream to have a car. But we complain that this car is not good enough and this is only V6 and it's not V8 and it's not this. Well, there are many Muslims out there that they have never driven a car in their lives. And this should make us feel grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have that opportunity, you know, to drive 30, 40, 50 minutes to come and pray Jum'ah, alhamdulillah, but at the same time to understand the responsibility that we take every time when we start that car. This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. And number two, what I see is when people put themselves in danger 
and they put others in danger as well. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us? وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى تَهْلُكَ And do not throw yourselves with your own hands into destruction. When you see that it's 80 kilometers an hour, that is there for a reason. If you drive 90, if you drive 100, you are going to follow what Allah is saying. You're throwing yourself into destruction with your own hands because no one is forcing you to drive more than 80. You want to do that. And you have to accept what is going to happen next. And you know, we see a lot of innocent people die. You know, mothers with children. We see children die. We see all these people. And sometimes it's not their fault whatsoever. So when is Qadr of Allah? And remember this from me. If someone hits you at the back, you didn't break any rules whatsoever. For you is Qadr of Allah because you've done nothing wrong. You didn't break any rules. And someone hits you at the back and he hit you because he was driving 20, 30, 40 Ks over limit. For you is a Qadr, but not for that person. He is going to be accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters, while we are driving as Muslims, it is very important to remain calm, to restrain ourselves, to be patient and to watch the road. How many people you have seen fighting on the, on, on the street? Why? Because you cut me off, not because you insulted me, not because you said this, you said that. One thing leads to another and then they start fighting and then sometimes as a result of one punch, as a result of one push, people might die. And you will ruin not just your life, going to prison for the rest of your life, but also ruin the life of your children, the life of your loved ones. And all it takes is that second. Why? Because we are angry. And angry comes from where? Comes from shaitan. Shaitan wants to, to make you angry so you can do something that you will regret for the rest of your life. And how many people, have you seen people that have done accidents? Some of them can never forgive themselves what they have done because, because of their reckless driving, you know, someone as a result died. And they say, how can I live with myself? I killed someone. Don't come to, to that point, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, encourage us always to be kind. Because our Prophet said, verily Allah loves kindness in every matter. Even when it comes to driving. Even if that other person is insulting you. Even if that person is cutting you off. This is one of the ways that we can show to other people that we are Muslims believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not uh, 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 utter foul language. We do not swear. Doesn't matter what they say to you. If you see that he has done injustice, call the police. Don't be that person to take matters in your own hands. No, this Islam doesn't encourage those things to us, my dear brothers and sisters. So, traffic safety, when it comes to Islam, everyone who breaks the rules of traffic safety has committed haram. Whoever breaks the rules of traffic safety has committed haram in Islam. Convey this message to your loved ones as well. Because pr preserving private and public interests, that is part of Islam as well. And you know, our Prophet Ali Sallallahu imagine this, 1,000, almost 1,500 years ago, you know what he said? Fulfill the rights of the road. Give the haq even to the roads that you're driving. SubhanAllah. Even then, they didn't have cars. They had even only horses and, and, and whatever they had during that time, mules. And yet, Prophet Ali said, fulfill the rights of the road. We as Muslims, are we doing that? 
people if you watch the news a lot of people that are doing this reckless driving and committing all these accidents unfortunately are Muslims or brothers and sisters as well and you remember I mentioned this before I have seen uh, people Muslim sisters and brothers committing those accidents and the way that they behave in front of camera is by insulting you know how hard it is for for me as an imam and you to see a Muslim sister covered and F this and F that and you would say this if you didn't see the face you would say this is the worst person on earth and then you see is our Muslim sister covered and saying those foul words in front of camera well I, I was embarrassed just watching that on the news you see how we how we em, em, embarrass ourselves my dear brothers and sisters when it comes to mobile phones when it comes to writing messages all these kind of things if you use them while driving you have committed in a way a crime and that is against Islam because Islam encourages us what to follow the rules of traffic safety simple as that all it takes is my dear brothers and sisters is few seconds for you to look at your phone and when you look up you're already doing that accident and sometimes you might survive as a driver and imagine you driving that car your kids at the back and as, as a result subhanallah may Allah protect us and our family as a result they die how can you live with yourself knowing that you have done that with your own hands you put yourself into destruction how are you going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment this is very important my, my dear brothers and sisters because we see our loved ones and I see parents going through that because their kids have died or paralyzed or in wheelchair so who will look after those children is those parents those parents have to deal with with those people every single day you know how difficult that is we know that if it comes from Allah we accept everything but when you know that my son has done a reckless driving and as a result he put someone in a wheelchair or he is in a wheelchair himself that's very hard to, to accept that because we can't say this is just, just from Allah no no this is from our own doings my dear brothers and sisters very important message for all of us because let me tell you this how beautiful Islam is what did the Prophet say when you hear Iqama for prayer every prayer and you're out there Imam is about to start the prayer what should we do should we run and join the prayer we're not allowed to run even though this is a prayer praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what did our Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? Walking with tranquility, walking slowly. And imagine if, if Prophet is saying walking slowly to a prayer. How about on the street? You see the, the comparison here? Haste is always from shaitan, my dear brothers and sisters. And tranquility and walking peaceful and driving peaceful. That is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that is from Islam every time you 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 feel that energy you want to just break the rules and you want to drive fast and show off or whatever remember that that is from shaitan and shaitan is encouraging you to commit and do something stupid that you will regret for the rest of your life and imagine as i said if this is in in prayer how about out there always remember this my dear brothers and sisters because islam teaches us what not to harm ourselves and not to harm others not just about ourselves as I told in the beginning it's about other people out there as well and Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi what did he say the Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the people are safe not just your tongue but also your hands also your doings your actions this is very important especially I'm a parent myself I say to all you parents as well 
You know, when your son or your daughter turns 18, we get excited, we want to buy a car for our son, for our daughter, nothing wrong with that. But being that young, and you buy for your son a sport car, V8, V10, all these GTI or these things, I don't know. And your son or your daughter being that young, 18 years of age, and excited because they're driving for the first time, that is a recipe for disaster. Start with something smaller until they get more mature, until they get used to, to roads and driving. And then later on, they can buy those things. I'm not saying don't buy those things for them. But let them learn first. You don't want their 18th birthday, someone to knock on your door. And I know people from our own community, this happened to them. And that family was never the same again. That family can never be recovered again. Very important. Very important. Especially here, I see some very powerful cars, 500 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower. That car is, is, is a machine. It's, it, no one is able to control that car. Especially in, in you know, the roads that we have in Australia, you're not able to drive anywhere more than 110. If you're in Europe, I have driven in, in Germany in, in some places, there's no limit there. 200, 220, if you're able to drive, you drive. Here, where are you going to drive? Either you're going to lose the license or you're going to do something even worse than that, hurt yourself or hurt someone else. And I know someone, a very close friend of mine, his son lost his license and he has to drive his son for one year to work and pick him up from work. He said, I am so tired. Imagine, he has to send his son to work and then go, up, go to work himself. He has to finish earlier so he can go pick up his son and then go home himself. You see, we take even license for granted, driving license. You know how difficult it is for any one of us if we didn't have the, the driving license? How would you come to the mosque? How would you go to work? You can't expect your son or your wife or your, your daughter or your, your father to, to drive you to work for one year. And this is only because we are not careful enough. So this is a message, my dear brothers and sisters, to myself, number one, and also to all of you and your family members. Please, please, let's advise each other to drive carefully to follow the, the, you know, the, the, the safety rules out there. They're there for a reason. And we don't want, as I said, to hear for ourselves or to hear for any member of the community that something has happened as a result of reckless driving. May Allah protect us and our family members, Ya Rabbal Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children from any harm, Ya Rabbal Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that we are careful every time when we drive, Ya Rabbal Alameen. To make us of those that we always think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we always think our family members every time when we start that car, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Oh Allah, make us of those that we're able to remember you every time when we start that car and we start that car with Bismillah, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Oh Allah, make us of those that you will keep us and our family members safe out there, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Make us of those that you're pleased with us in this world and the next, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Make us of those that we're able to feed ourselves and our families with halal and to stay away from haram, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Make us of those that we love you and we love your Prophet more than ourselves, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Make us of those that our last words in this dunya to be La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Make us of those that we will be able to drink from the hawd of the Prophet on the Day of Judgment, Ya Rabbal Alameen. And make us of those who will be the neighbors of Prophet in Jannah, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ameen, Ameen. Wa kulu kawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. Say astaghfirullah, innahu huwa al-gafoor al-raheem.